There are scenes in this book that would make Glotka blush. Yes, Glotka, the Inquisitor or torturer from the first Law series. Even he would be like, wow, that's excessive. And then he'd complain about stairs or something. Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing Norileska Groans by Michael Fletcher and Clayton Snyder. Basically, Norileska Groans is a crime thriller with some fantastical elements in it, and it is very much a grim dark novel. And this fantasy world is very dark and grim and filthy and bloody and smells generally bad. It's gross and violent. After reading a couple chapters, you might want to take a shower. I don't know. And that just goes along perfectly with the story. And the story is this. We have two protagonists. We have Gen. He gets fired from his job. He was a soldier and he's just overall a very violent dude. And so he falls in with the wrong kind of people. The kind of people that will put his violence to work and pay him for it. And he wants to get paid. He wants to provide. Cat also goes out and tries to fill a secretary position. And it turns out the government has decided that uh, she's basically going to be a detective. And one of the first women detectives. And that exposes her to a world of all the people that Gen has to deal with. Uh, just the criminal underground. And from there, chaos ensues. <laughs> as you can imagine. These characters do terrible things. But you... You know, at the end of the day, they're just people trying to make it in a really messed up world. And so you still root for them. And that brings us, I think, to the general theme of this story, which I believe has to do with insecurities. The insecurities of men and women and how we address them. You know, how do we act when we have no confidence versus how we act with confidence. And magic plays a part in that. Now, there is magic. And there are some fantastical elements in this story. I don't want to say they're in the background. It's <laughs> they're consistently in your face every chapter. The way magic is kind of brought about in this story is through these magical stones that people wear around their neck. And I don't know why I did that. Like people don't know where their neck is. Anyways, you wear these stones and they give you certain personality traits that were stolen from other people. Like, uh, say you're not very confident. You wear a stone for confidence. Of course, it's not as simple as just, here's some confidence, or here's happiness, or whatever. There can be very specific personality traits. Maybe you feel certain ways about very specific things. And I'll be really vague here, because I don't want to spoil anything. But the extent to which the magical stones can affect and change people, and steal things from people, and even there's uh, some stones that will block out your memory. Like, meaning it'll take all those memories from that day. Like, you put on the stone uh, for Cap's character. She becomes basically a detective. And so she puts on this memory stone. We'll say it records everything about her day. And as soon as she takes it off, she has no idea what happened during her shift. And that can be such a jarring and unsettling feeling, especially in a, a mystery like this with so much violence. Like, on one hand, you have no idea what's gonna happen, but you know the stakes are high and brutal. So if she doesn't know what happened, and sometimes you as the reader also don't know what she did throughout her day, and you have to try to put the pieces together. Putting together all these pieces and just trying to figure out the bigger mystery is definitely something that will keep you intrigued and keep you guessing all the way till pretty much the very end. So if you're a fan of mystery, again, this book is for you. So there's a couple of ways the characters can get these magical stones. One is through a venicum, veneficum, I can't pronounce the word, a veneficum. He's almost like a therapist or, or a psychologist where he kind of sees people and decides, oh, you need this stone or you need, uh, clearly you need some happiness or you need some peace or confidence or maybe you need to be more aggressive. And he kind of just figures it out and gives it to people and he works for the government, he works for the police agency. The other way is, of course, through the criminal underground who have their own shady, messed up stones. <laughs> I'll let your imagination just run wild with the possibilities, violent, messed up things you could put in these stones to give to other people who will then take on those traits. Both of these writers write in such a way that encourages you to read this fast. They don't waste a lot of time once you get into a chapter. It's not like, oh, here's seven paragraphs of what the walls look like. No, it's like, quickly, boom, you're here, and then the characters are interacting and conflict. There's so much conflict 
all throughout each and every chapter that it makes the book honestly very hard to put down. I'm a pretty slow reader, but I still finished this in about a week. And I know a couple other people who finished this in like two days. Every time you finish a chapter, you just have that feeling like, well, I need to know what happens next. There's, there's so much danger out there, like for both characters. And so you start to read the next chapter and immediately you're jumping right back into conflict. And so it's just a steady pace chapter after chapter it hooks you and then you get stuck and then it drags you all the way through the story <laughs> there's a high level of violence in this book there are scenes of torture very graphic and slow deliberate scenes of torture the way this this entire book is written um, if it was a movie the camera would be like fucking right here <laughs> It's, it's very close. You feel very close to the characters. And uh, so when violence happens and people fight and kill each other, the camera is right here. <laughs> you know, you're very close. And if you're a fan of action and you want some brutal like violence, you want a protagonist that is willing to utterly destroy everything in their path, you're gonna enjoy this. I know I did. Now, as far as a rating goes, if I had to rate it this like a typical fantasy novel, like an epic fantasy up against like Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones and all that, you know, it wouldn't rank very high because that's not really what this is. Technically, yes, there are fantastical elements, there's magic involved, but this is so much more of a crime thriller and a mystery. So as far as rating goes, the category I would have to stick it in would be a crime thriller mystery fantasy <laughs> if that's a genre i think breach of peace came out and it would also go in that genre this is a book with a distinct personality that absolutely will please its target audience and people outside of that target audience might pick this up and be like what the fuck is this and <laughs> so there's not a lot of books like this specifically that I'm aware of. But anyways, in that very specific category, this would go in the A tier. I think this will absolutely please grimdark fans. It'll please people who want a good crime mystery with a lot of violence. This will shock you at moments, but it also has a good story. And the characters, man, again, they do violent, messed up things, but they're just trying to make it in a very fucked up world. And so this whole time, pretty much start to finish, you're rooting for them, even though there, there could be times where you're like, damn, they, they shouldn't have did that. They end up in a very different place from where they started. And just the amount of things that happened in this very fast paced, quick, grim novel. Mm. <laughs> it's just, it's just good, good stuff. So if you're interested in picking up Norleska Groans, I will put a link down in the description, probably in the top comment as well. Check it out. Highly recommend. Until next time, later.